Greetings, gentlemen. Here's a question I hear frequently. How long does infatuation last? I'm sure we're all familiar with the infatuation phase. It's that period at the beginning of a romantic relationship when two people can't get enough of each other, but their friends find them insufferable. You're smooth. You're smooth. You're smooth. You're smooth. You're smooth. Now, when I say people ask me about infatuation, it's not as if strangers flag me down at Costco because they like the cut of my jib. The question comes up because I've written two books for men on choosing good women and healthy relationships. In both of those books, I discuss the advantages of waiting out the infatuation phase before you even consider the type of commitments that impede your exit. I'm talking about entanglements like shacking up or adopting a dog together. Not that there's anything wrong with those commitments. I live with my wife and we have a dog. Entanglements are only a problem when a guy realizes he needs to leave a relationship, but he blocked his own exit before he knew what he was getting into. Imagine moving a woman into your house only to discover that she's a slob or she's emotionally unstable or even violent. Countless men have learned the hard way that it's easier to move a woman in than it is to move her out. The same goes for you ladies. Shacking up or becoming entangled with a man who's an unknown quantity is a pretty wild gamble. That might seem obvious here in the light of day, but infatuation makes us reckless. It puts emotion in the driver's seat and it compels couples to lock each other down before they understand the nature of the relationship. That's especially true for us men. We're quicker than women to get attached and possessive, but making life-altering decisions when we're infatuated is like shopping for groceries when we're hungry and stoned. Generally speaking, you can't see her or the relationship clearly until infatuation wears off, but that's not obvious when you're in the throes of infatuation, just like it's not obvious to someone who's slightly tipsy that they shouldn't be driving. If you understand the dangers of infatuation, then it's only reasonable to wonder how many weeks or months need to elapse before it's safe to move forward with the relationship. So what's the answer? How long does infatuation last exactly? Well, as I wrote in both books, the answer is seven. Thanks for watching. Look, most men like numbers. I know I do. But infatuation is a complex emotional state and that makes it tough to quantify. So if we can't put a number to it, let's at least define the effect that it has on our minds. Maybe that'll lead someplace useful. And as it happens, the anthropologist Helen Fisher has looked at precisely that question and she noticed something interesting. She noticed that infatuation involves the same kind of cognitive handicaps that characterize drug addiction. According to Dr. Fisher, both experiences involve euphoria, craving, tolerance, dependence, and withdrawal. She even fired up an MRI machine and noticed that infatuation involves the same areas of the brain that can be thrown out of alignment by chemical addiction. Now, I'm not a fancy researcher. I'm just your friendly neighborhood psychologist. But I've long thought of romantic infatuation as an altered state of mind. I didn't use an MRI machine to determine that. I don't even own a microscope. I just watch the boneheaded decisions men make when they're under the influence. And as far as I can tell, becoming financially or logistically entangled when you're infatuated isn't much different from being so drunk that you get suckered into the VIP room at a strip club, or letting the rent money ride at the craps table because you're beaked up on coke and you think you can't lose. The difference is that those mistakes are cheaper than getting entangled in the wrong relationship. Still, I was a bit skeptical about Dr. Fisher's claim that infatuation functions like a chemical addiction. I've always thought of infatuation as something closer to being slightly baked than being a full-on junkie. But maybe I'm wrong. Recently, on X, I asked men and women to describe the experience of infatuation. Their answers made me think Dr. Fisher may be closer to the truth than I am. Here's a sample of what people told me. Infatuation is a low-key obsession mixed with nausea, excitement, and adoration. Your heart beats faster, your stomach tickles, and everything seems better, happier, and more exciting when you're with this person. It's a semi-consuming desire to know, be, and explore with someone so much it can override basic needs for personal survival, yet it still gives you energy. I said, God damn. It leaves your brain hijacked and rewired to follow hormonal and irrational impulses. If you pause the video and read these responses, you might notice a theme. A lot of them sound like they're describing a transcendent experience, like something involving magic mushrooms and a shaman named Kevin. The way I see it, infatuation causes a couple of major perceptual problems. The first is that you're each motivated to present your best selves all polished and perfect, not a hair out of place and not a character flaw to be found. The second is that you're each motivated to see the best in each other and ignore the blemishes. In other words, an infatuated couple is colluding in a fantasy. In fact, unfamiliarity may be a crucial component of infatuation. A classic study from 1971 suggested it's very unusual to become infatuated with people we know intimately. I've seen exceptions to that, and maybe you have too. The point is, infatuation motivates us to avoid awareness of imperfections, and that's easier to do when you don't know much about a person. 
Infatuation is beer goggles for the soul. And personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. I say enjoy the ride while it lasts. Just don't buy the whole damn theme park. So getting back to the question, how long does infatuation last? Let's look at some more of Dr. Fisher's work. In her book, Anatomy of Love, she cited three studies. The first indicated that infatuation most commonly lasts between 18 months and three years. That was a self-report study, which can be unreliable. So she looked at a second study that tried to quantify infatuation by measuring serotonin activity in the blood. That's sort of like measuring your tire pressure by poking at your wheel with a 2x4. Still, it's a solid attempt at objectivity. That study suggested infatuation lasts between 12 to 18 months. In a third study, some couples remained intensely in love for 6 to 10 years, and some for more than 10 years. So, to sum it all up, infatuation appears to last somewhere between several weeks and several years. That's not very helpful, but that's okay. I think there's a more useful question to ask. How do you know when infatuation has run its course? We know how infatuation colors our world. It's a deviation from our mental and emotional baselines. It alters what we see, what we think, and what we feel. That means we can also understand what it feels like when we return to baseline. All that's required is some self-awareness. But if you don't mind me saying, some of you men struggle in that department. You're not accustomed to looking inward. Perhaps you should deactivate your emotion chip for now. Good idea, sir. If that's you then let me suggest three concrete signs that you're regaining your senses and your brain is detoxing after marinating in all those love hormones. First, your life, your hobbies, and your pre-existing friendships come back into focus. The people and activities that took a back seat when you and Shmoopy couldn't get enough of each other start to reassert themselves. Second, you return to your emotional baseline. There's a concept in psychology called hedonic adaptation. It says that each of us has our emotional thermostat set at a certain temperature, and we generally don't deviate for very long. We all have periods where we feel more or less happy, but we generally come back to baseline. That means if you were a slightly grumpy meathead before you met the woman of your dreams, then you return to your slightly grumpy baseline as infatuation wears off. Third, idealization falls away and she becomes a three-dimensional human being with imperfections. Some of those little quirks and personality traits that once seemed so adorable start to lose their charm. For example, maybe you once found it endearing that she's scatterbrained. She was so cute every time she had to look for her keys. As infatuation fades, you might still think it's cute, but you also find it a bit annoying. Welcome back to the real world. Your results may vary. You might experience something entirely different. And to complicate things, infatuation probably fades much more slowly than it appears. The point is, What goes up must come down, especially where neurochemistry is concerned. When your brain returns to baseline, so will your thoughts, your feelings, your perceptions, and your behaviors. That's when the real vetting begins, and the two of you can see how you really function together through life's ups and downs. That's when you discover whether her character is worthy of adding to your inner circle, and whether the relationship itself is a blessing or a burden. It takes time and shared experiences to answer those questions. And that brings me to my next vital topic for the self-aware gentleman. What's the rush? Why are some men in such a hurry to lock down a relationship before they understand how that relationship will affect their lives? Well, in my experience, most men who rush the process are reacting to some manner of anxiety. Probably the most common is a desire to rescue a woman from her urgency. Women sometimes realize that time is running out to settle down and build a family, so they urge their men to escalate the relationship before either of them has had a chance to properly evaluate it. As harsh as it may sound, I think every man in that position needs to hear this. You have no obligation to rescue her, especially if you weren't complicit in the circumstances and the decisions that created her urgency. Playing the white knight can be catastrophic for both of you. A second reason I've seen men rush the process is their own insecurity. A tremendous number of men believe they're lucky if a woman will even acknowledge them, let alone sleep with them. If a willing participant happens to come along, then these guys grab onto her with both hands, like a drowning man with a life preserver. If that's you, I encourage you to scrutinize your beliefs about yourself and the world. Get therapy. Talk to a friend. Read some books. The idea that you should take any woman who will have you may not be as true as you think. I've seen a third common reason for rushing the process. Some men are simply on a mission. They're anxious to build a family and an empire. When they find a woman who appears to fit the bill, then they onboard her like an employee. The problem is, you can't just fire your wife if she doesn't work out. If you're a man on a mission, then that's great. I'm in your corner. Just bear in mind that the family court system is filled with hard-driving men who rushed the process. 
So to answer the question we started with, there's no set time limit for infatuation. It's there until it's gone. Until then, a man who's infatuated is a man who's operating under the influence. What could a girl have that I... His judgment is not to be trusted. He'll sober up eventually. Hopefully he doesn't cause a train wreck in the meantime. All right, fellas and ladies, that's all I got for you today. This is just one way to think about infatuation. It's certainly not the only way, so let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. With all your mind, oh.